Big says being held, I think. Bravo, can you guys get back on big stairs, please? Yep, cover that. Uh, Gun Gunidam point being flipped. Hey guys, this is uh, Alex S189. And uh, in this video, I'm going to be going over the basics of squad composition. Um, basically, I'm going to go over what it is, why you need it, and you know how to how to do it the easiest and fastest way. Uh, so yeah, let's get to it. So what is squad composition then? The easiest way to describe it is the loadout of your squad. The basic mentality being that you are picking the right tools for the right job. The reason we need it is so that the squad is at its most effective for any given situation. Here's an example of the composition for 252V that I made a little while ago. As you can see, it has three medics, two engineers, two heavy assaults, two maxes, an infiltrator, and two guys I call vehicle floaters. The vehicle floaters keep galaxies, sunderers, and any required logistics alive so that the rest of the squad can continue to fight. They are mostly used when playing in a service match as 252 usually fills in as a fast response with dignity or war tactical, or a dignity. That makes these guys essential. So how do you find the ideal squad composition? The easiest way to find out the best squad composition is to ask yourself this question very quickly. What is the situation? This breaks down into several sub-questions, like How am I getting there? Am I going by air or ground? Do we have friendly sunderers or spawns in the area? Are we on attack or defense? Are there enemy vehicles around? Will I need to do an icebreaker, which is usually a max crash, or an icebreaker flanker? An icebreaker flanker is a squad of light assaults flanking around the enemy forces during a max crash. Another question is, are we going multi-role? For example, are we going infantry support with air to ground? How long will we need to survive? A good, very good example situation for this is a back cap behind enemy lines, <laughs> where you have to survive for a full four minutes if you want to get the cap. The 252 uh, composition I shared is optimized for speed, multi-role and survivability, as it has a good balance of these three things. It doesn't specialize in any one of them, but it's got a good balance. When building a squad from scratch, I have a personal order which I like to follow. Usually it is medics, engineers, infiltrators, heavy assaults, light assaults and max. This is the order in which I build a squad, which is essentially a hierarchy of importance per class. The reason I put light assaults and heavy assaults at the bottom is because every class has a weapon, essentially. Heavy assaults and light assaults can be replaced by other classes if needed, apart from in some specialty situations. Maxes are also at the bottom because they are essentially a luxury, but that is more to do with my playstyle. There are a lot of situations where a max is either essential or very, very useful. A very common one is normal point holds. A max is very good for point holds and can basically turn it, turn around a non-cap into a cap. However, when you want to get a max, there is a very large nanite cost associated with that, which, for my kind of gameplay, which is fast response, this is some of the trade-off. We do not use maxes because of this large cost. I will now go through each of the classes from top to bottom in a bit more detail and why they are used and what their roles are. So starting at the top we have medics. The reason we have medics is for survivability. Usually in a squad you'll find yourself focusing on two objectives, so what you want to do in this situation, you want to have three medics. So with these three medics what you'll do is you'll have two actual combat medics which will be there to revive the guys actually fighting on the ground. And the third medic will be hanging back at all times and be there to revive the medics if they die. And this last medic is also going to be the very last person in the squad to die. As what he will be doing, he'll be back 
ready to throw down res grenades if the squad dies. He is the last stand medic that could bring the squad up and stop it from being wiped. He is essentially the fallback of the squad. Medics are possibly the most powerful class in the game and usually you want to have three of them before you have anything else. And you never want to have just one medic in a squad because if that medic dies, the rest of your squad will be picked off bit by bit until there's nothing left. So you always want to have a minimum, an absolute minimum, of two medics. Yeah. Everything fine. For engineers, you usually only need one or two. They are mainly there to provide ammunition to the squad. This is important to remember because without ammo during a point hold, for example, which is the most common situation in Plant Hold 2, if you run out of ammo, you die. It's as simple as that. Two engineers help ensure ammo is placed and there is plenty of turrets down to assist with additional cover and firepower. When you have maxes in the squad, you typically want to have one engineer per max and if you can spare, an additional engineer to put down ammo. The infiltrator's main job is recon tools. Once placed, recon tools allow for very easy point holds. Motion spotters for defense and recon darts for attack are often seen because of their individual traits. Motion spotters are really good for point defense, while recon darts are very good for point attack because of the range on the recon darts. However, motion spotters show direction and position at the same time, and in real time. Infiltrators are also critical for situations like backcaps because of their hacking ability. I'll go on to backcapping in a later episode. Usually in the squad you only really want two or three heavy assaults or light assaults. They are the main assault classes so they're usually at the front of the squad taking most of the firepower as well as giving out most of it as well. For heavy assaults, concussion grenades are very useful for point attack as they can disable the enemy defenders. Light assaults are also great for flanking and sniper destruction, as well as spawn beacon placement. If there are no maxes in the squad, typically you want to replace these maxes with either one of these assault classes or a medic. Of course, this depends on the situation. For maxes, they are always at the front of the room or defending a lane or point. They are a luxury to have, as I have already said. They are also very expensive and not usually needed. To conclude and summarize, knowing your ideal squad composition is mainly about knowing the situation you are going into or the situation you are in and knowing what you expect from each class and their roles. For example, icebreakers will almost always need maxes, anti-vehicle drops will need more light assaults or heavy assaults or engineers. It's mainly about the situation and class roles. To summarize the class roles, medics keep the squad alive, engineers give ammo and keep maxes up and running, infiltrators hack and place down recon tools, assault classes kill and maxes stand there and say nope to any enemies coming your way. Here is the hierarchy and multi-role squad composition again on the screen. I hope this video was helpful to anyone starting out and even some of the veteran squad leaders out there. Hopefully I'll see you next time in another episode. Thanks for watching guys.